Good day. Welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. Today we will talk about what sin does to people. As we can see from St. John chapter 9 verse 39 and Romans 7 and verse 19. That sin causes a distorted view of spiritual things. So we understand that sin is more powerful than the human being who is a slave to it. Unless we put our trust, our faith, and our confidence in God and what Jesus did for us at Calvary, we remain under the slavery or the bondage of a sin. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 7 and 19, what I wish to practice, I cannot, for I am an unwilling slave to sin. But Jesus Christ is the deliverer from this slavery, this sin. St. Matthew 1, 21, Romans 1, 16, Romans 10, 9 through 10, and 1 John 1 and verse 9. So we know that sin enslaves. We know also that sin corrupts the soul. Romans 1, 21 through 32. We know that sin blinds the eyes, blinds the mind. Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4 and verse 18. And sin hardens the conscience. Ephesians 4, 19. So just to list a few things we see today when one accepts salvation by placing their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as we say and what he did at Calvary, we obtain blessings for being in Christ. We remain under the curse or the bondage, the slavery of sin when we fail to put our trust and our confidence in Jesus Christ for a salvation. Romans 8 and verse 1 tells us uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. St. John 3 17 tells us uh, that God hath not sent his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. So the Apostle Paul who tells us about him being a slave to sin now tells us that he is fully delivered and the experience he has from being delivered from the slavery of sin, the law of sin and death. So yes, there is a divine method of deliverance from both the law of sin and the law of death. And when this deliverance takes place, like Romans 8 and 1 tells us, there is no condemnation to such person who have now become one in Christ Jesus. So we see that in Romans chapter 8 verse 1 and 1 John 3 and verse 17. Another blessing is that one is free from the law of sin and death. Another blessing that is obtained, sin is condemned in the flesh. And the one who is born again, the one who has accepted Christ as now for Christ as fulfilled in such person is righteousness. Such one as life and peace. Such one has now become spirit filled. Such one's body is dead to sin. The flesh is crucified. And now such one walks according 
to the spirit one now walks in the light rather than in darkness one now walks according not to the flood the, the lust of the flesh but according to the spirit and we know for a fact that jesus christ is the only deliverer from sin as we say in saint matthew 1 verse 21 romans 1 16 romans 10 9 through 10 and first john 1 and verse 9. there's a little song we normally sing at sunday school when i was a little girl if you only know the blessing that salvation brings you will you would never stay away if you only see the table spread with lovely things you would come to the feast today for the door is open wide and the savior bids everybody to come an open invitation and there is nothing that you have to pay so be wise and step inside and do not spurn or throw away this offer of salvation because if we do we continue to live according to the flesh and we are enslaved by sin so we know that salvation brings redemption as we say it's freedom from condemnation is a spirit-led life rather than a life of the flesh of the lust of the flesh it is a life that has and display the love of god is a life that desire truth and love truth rather than the lies of satan it now becomes a light of life of faith instead of a life of worry our lives have now become a life sanctified set apart for god for him to use us in his service according as he sees fit is a life now that we have wisdom and knowledge and understanding and comfort direction guidance discernment revelation all these provided by the holy spirit as we say it's a life of righteousness first corinthians 1 and verse 30 a life of hope in a world and a time when everything seems as if all hope is gone first corinthians 15 and 19 we have security in this life and even in death that when one dies in christ it is not the final end such one will still be able to live and reign with christ eternally first corinthians 15 and verse 18 is a life that will be resurrected first corinthians 15 and first thessalonians 4 and verse 18 is a life of joy a life of peace first corinthians 15 31 such life or such person's life is now being established in christ second corinthians 1 21 and we triumph we triumph over sin we triumph over death we triumph over hell we triumph over the grave second corinthians 2 14 we have now become new creation because all things are passed away and all things would have become new second corinthians 5 17 through 18 is a life of liberty a life of freedom the bible tells us whom christ set free is truly free indeed galatians 2 4 we have now have a life that is a life of simplicity we have just placed our faith our trust our hope and our confidence in god and i mean a life that is are free from the worry and the complications and the cares of this life the bible tells us uh, we have all spiritual blessings in christ jesus uh, because it has been provided by god our father ephesians 1 and verse 3 we have power not power to lord over people but power 
over sin. Power over this enslavement, over this slavery, over this bondage that the enemy have us under when we were living in a sin. The Bible tells us we, we, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We have become near to God. That even when we sing, draw me nearer, it is a testimony that we truly want to be closer and closer and closer to him. Because somebody says, the closer we get, the more we'll be able to see the glory of a soon coming king. Ephesians 3, 2, sorry, and verse 13. Now we have eternal purpose. We are no more wandering in sin. We are not uh, fruitless uh, and our life seems as if uh, um, it is hopeless and there is nothing to life. We now have purpose. Ephesians 3 and verse 11. One also become self-humbling. If we see Philippians 2 and verse 5, we also obtain grace, 2 Timothy 2 and verse 1. So when we have salvation, this is all the blessings that is provided. We have eternal life, John 3, 16 and 2 Timothy 1 and verse 10. We have now the high calling of God, Philippians 3, 14. And we are preserved in Christ, being made perfect in him. Jude chapter 1, 1 and Colossians 1 and verse 28. So my encouragement, let us not continue to live in sin because we see what sin does. It distorts our view, it corrupts our soul, it hardens our hearts and our consciences just to name a few. It enslaves us, keep us in bondage. But Jesus Christ sets us free because of salvation that which he did at Calvary. Um, today, we encourage to take salvation, move away from slavery and sin to Christ and salvation. And Jesus Christ will give you eternal life. God bless you. Thank you again for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please share. And don't forget to visit my YouTube channel, Daily Med with Lady Who.